Hey guys, Ben here. I wanted to record this video because I worked on a project last year. It was a 3D animation of a new coffee brewing uh, system. And after the 3D uh, animation had been rendered out and we were about ready to deliver, the client had approved everything. The client came to me and asked if it was possible to have steam coming out of the coffee cup um, as the coffee dripped into it. And uh, of course I said it's it's possible, but likely it might require a uh, re-render of that particular shot, uh, which would add to the overall cost of the project as well as delay the delivery of the project. And we were literally about ready to deliver. I told the client, let me see, let me see if there's something that I could potentially do. And I knew that the only uh, way to get around not having to re-render it was to add something, whether it was stock footage or uh, in this particular case, either Trap Code Particular or uh, Boris Effects Particle Illusion. Um, those were kind of the two options that were kind of in the back of my head. But since I was finishing in Adobe Premiere and the shot is really short and I knew I only really needed the point tracking data, uh, Particle Illusion is the only one of those two options that works inside of Premiere as well as After Effects. And the added benefit of using Particle Illusion is that Mocha tracking is built right into the plugin itself. Because I'm technically still under an NDA with this particular project, what I'm going to show you is a recreation of that shot. Uh, something that I recreated um, so I can get rid of all the branding and not have to worry about any of that stuff. So here we are in Premiere. I'm going to hit play on this particular clip. As you can see, the coffee streams down from the coffee machine, goes into the cup. So the client was fine with the way that it is right now. Obviously, they approved it. Um, but they did, if there was a possibility of getting some steam on there, um, they uh, wanted to see if that could happen. So I have applied Particle Illusion to the clip and I'm gonna launch the Particle Illusion interface. Actually, I'm gonna stop playing on this. Uh, let's <clears throat> launch Particle Illusion. I knew I wanted something uh, smoke-ish, smoke-like. Um, as you can see here, um, there are uh, a bunch of different uh, presets here that we could choose from. So one of the easiest ways to uh, go about looking for something specific is just start typing it into the search function search box right here. So I did that. I typed in Steam. Um, and as you can see right here, we actually have quite a few um, different Steam presets. And I think I ended up using um, Steamy Smoke Column, not that one. I did not use I used the this one, Column, the Steamy Smoke Column. And I just double clicked on it and added it to uh, my scene right here. And the only parameter that I uh, that I ended up adjusting is just the width parameter. So I adjusted the width parameter, and I don't really need to worry about positioning um, where this is right here, right now. And I'll show you in just a little bit why that's the case. So um, I'm gonna click apply, and we're gonna hop back out into the Premiere timeline um, and as you can see right there, it has been added and obviously it is not tracked into the shot. So we're going to fix that. So we're going to go to the transform section here and I'm going to twirl that down and I'm going to select world. Um, and then I am going to, because I want the whole thing to move, I don't want just the emitter to move. I want the whole uh, kit and caboodle to move. Um, so I'm selecting world right there. And as you'll notice right here, it's, it's grayed out when it's selected, when none is selected. So when you select world, your motion tracker slash mocha, um, option is now available to you. So let's click on mocha motion tracker. Now, um, I wanted to, uh, the search area, the world, uh, center search area, um, is what I want. I want, I, I kind of drew this around the uh, lip of the coffee cup and I kind of got all of it in there. Um, so let's expand this out to about right there. And then I took the, um, the center, uh, where did it go? Oop, where did it go? Select that again. I took the center and I moved it this, this world center point is gonna essentially kind of be the X, Y of where your emitter is gonna be. Um, so I kind of want it to be coming out of there. I didn't put it over the actual 
uh, coffee stream itself because I don't want mocha to get confused um, with any of that. So just kind of put it in the center or tried to get it in the center as much as possible. Um, and then once that's positioned there, I don't need skew and perspective and those are unchecked. Um, I could uncheck rotate because I really only need uh, translation um, and potentially scale. So, but I just left those um, on by default. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna track forward and I'm gonna let Mocha do its magic. And as you can see there, it sticks pretty dang well. Um, and once that's done, we're gonna go to the end there and then we're gonna track um, forward or backwards, I guess. Uh, I guess this is forwards, technically. Um, so we're gonna track here, we're gonna let that go. This is all in real time. I'm not speeding this up at all. Um, so as you can see here, it goes pretty, pretty fast. And we are done now. All right, so that is done. So I'm gonna close out of the Mocha interface. I'm gonna save it, of course. Um, and as you can see, I don't know if you saw that right there, it immediately jumped to the center of, let's see, let's show the motion path right here, and immediately jumped to the center of uh, where I had that little crosshairs uh, point. And as you can see, it is tracked. It's tracked on there. Um, <clears throat> and obviously it's not blending very well. And to change that, we go to the composite section of the plugin. And instead of direct or classic, um, which is kind of giving us, um, uh, and it, it is giving us an alpha channel, um, but we wanna actually blend this. So we're gonna change this to alpha plus apply mode. And obviously the image goes away because now we have to select the apply mode, which is screen. And once that's done, it blends a lot better into the scene. And I'm actually gonna dial back the opacity by about 50%. So it's a little bit more subtle, um, which Steam is, is very, very subtle. That's probably still too strong, but I'm gonna leave it at 50%. And, um, and that's pretty much the process. The only other thing that I did, as you can see right here, the, the particle effects kind of start right at the beginning um, and they shouldn't start until a little bit after the drip starts pouring in there. Um, so about right here. So the only other thing that I did um, in the client project was I actually uh, put on a mask onto the plugin and I animated the um, mask reveal. Let's turn up the feather on this quite a bit, about right there. Um, and I went in here and I went to the mask path um, and I clicked on the keyframe option there and i'm going to go back to the beginning there we're going to click on the mask again and i'm going to move this mask down so now as it comes up so kind of actually i want this to go a little bit higher actually um, I'm going to have this go up here. So let's move this up so that the, let's move this out a little bit. So now we have this animating up to kind of reveal. So it doesn't, so we don't see the particles right at the very beginning. Um, and you know, it's, it's down and dirty and it could be refined a little bit more, but this is basically the thing. This is basically how you, how it's done. That was a really quick down and dirty way of adding steam to a shot that wasn't normally there. I didn't have to go back into Cinema 4D and add, you know, X particles or, or, you know, get somebody to do a Houdini simulation for me. Um, it was really that simple and actually, as quick as it was for me to show you, that's literally how much, almost how much time I spent on making this happen for the client. And they loved it. They were over the moon uh, for this and were, were so ecstatic that they that we were able to make this happen. So if you have any questions about anything that I covered in this particular video, if you want me to spend a little bit more time on Particle Illusion or Mocha, definitely let me know in the comments below. If you got value out of this video, I would very much appreciate a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already and absolutely feel free to share this video if you feel so inclined. 
I would appreciate it. Thank you very much. I almost forgot, if you would like to get yourself 15% off of Boris FX Continuum, you can go to the BorisFX.com website and use my coupon code BMotion-BCC to get yourself 15% off of Continuum. Just be aware it is an affiliate code, so I do get a little bit of a kickback, but it helps support this channel and more content like this in the future. And as always, I hope you guys stay frosty and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.